This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. When you want to make volume changes in a track over time in a multi-track session, you use keyframes on the volume envelope. You know, it's kind of a manual process. You click on the volume envelope to add a keyframe, go a little bit farther into the track and click to add another keyframe, then drag it up or down, things like that. So yeah, it's manual, a little tedious, and kind of linear when you go from one keyframe to the next. Well, there are smoother, more automated methods to do this. They're called write, latch, and touch. And I'm going to show you those methods in this tutorial. So track down that file, 1214 write, latch, touch, multi-track session, right here inside the multi-track session subfolder. You're going to find this to be kind of familiar. This is the multi-track session we worked on a couple of exercises ago where you wrap things up by adjusting volume levels using keyframes in the track or in the clip, like right there. Well, this time we're going to save this one thing that we did at the end for last, where we adjusted the All Instruments track against the vocalist. This time I've not made that adjustment. We're going to do that work here inside this tutorial. So let's just get started with learning about what right latch and touch are. Traditionally, right latch and touch have been part of the mixer. Over here in the mixer, you can see this little drop-down list here, and there they are, right, latch, and touch. But they're also available inside the multi-track session. If I just kind of scroll back up here and spread things out a bit, you're going to see this thing called read pop up here. You drop that down, there they are, right, latch, and touch. So you can use the mixer or you can use the multi-track session. I lean toward the multi-track session. I'm going to show you why in a moment, but I want to show you the mixer anyway. So let's go back to the mixer. The other thing that people like about the mixer is that it's ergonomic. People are used to using these sliders. They've seen them for years and years inside production studios. So seeing this representation of a hardware mixer is kind of comforting for guys who are used to working inside production studios. It's kind of easy to drag these guys up and down. I'll just do it for you right now. Try to make me love you anyway. You drag things up and down like that. It's, it's just, you, know, you get this visual feedback as you drag them up and down. And yeah, it's pretty comfortable. But when you work over in the multi-track session, Guess what? It works the same. You just don't have that little slider. If I want to change the vocal here, hang on a second. I'll bring that volume level down by dragging it down. I couldn't give what you would drag it down. Oh, so you can drag it left and right. Give you what you so it does work the same. It just doesn't give you that little visual feedback of the slider. I'll take it back to kind of where we started, right around three or so. You know, you got something that can work in a mixer, but can also work equally as well inside the multi-track session. But people do like the mixer for that sort of hardware feel that it has. But there are some drawbacks to the mixer for me. For example, where are the transport controls? Where are you inside the current session? What time are we at? The only way you can see the time is by looking at the selection, which really isn't effective. If I want to go to some place in the session, I can't use the selection to get there. If I want to click play or stop or fast forward, you can't do that here either. I could bring the transport controls over. I could go window, transport, and that would add the transport controls for, you know, forward or play or fast forward or rewind or whatever. There they are. I can also get the time over by going window time. That'll add the time there. So I can click on there and type in a time like you know, just zero, 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 zero. That might take me to the beginning. Okay, that's good. But I'm missing that current time indicator. I'm missing the visual feedback of a multi-track session. So I'm not all that hot about working in the mixer, but I do want to show you how it works up against the multi-track session. So I'm going to switch back to the default view of this workspace by going reset default. There we go. And that takes us back to the multi-track session. I'm going to put this multi-track session in a frame by going up here, getting the grabber bar and putting it over here. There it is in the frame over there. I'm going to drag it down so you can see all of it. Slide it over a bit so you can see more of it. And now we've got multi-track session and the mixer. Okay, so we can work with them both at the same time. I'm going to go back over here to the vocalist because we're going to work with her first because it's kind of more intuitive to bring her voice up and down and we'll deal with the all instruments a little bit later. So the first order of business is to explain what right, latch, and touch are. Here are the three things over here, right, latch, and touch. We have right selected and then start playing the audio and then changing these volume levels it adds keyframes wherever you make any changes, plus it adds a keyframe where you started and adds a keyframe where you ended, whether you made the change immediately there or not. So that's right. When you're done, when you click stop, right switches over to touch. What touch does is it takes any change that you make, and if you take your finger off the mouse, it reverts back to the previous setting. Then you make another change, take your finger off the mouse, and it goes back to the previous setting. It takes about a second to go back to the previous setting. Latch does what you think. It just latches on to whatever you just did. So 
you start playing, it doesn't add a keyframe until you make something different. So you're running along, there are no keyframes, and then boom, you make a change, it adds a keyframe at the beginning and the end of the change with keyframes in between. So let's do right first, since that's kind of the most common one. I'm going to start playing this and change the vocalist over time. And rather than hear the rest of the instruments, I'm going to solo this track. So I'm going to go over here and click on solo for the vocalist. I can click on it here as well. I want to move the current time indicator to where she's singing. Again, one of the advantages of having the multi-track session open. And now we're going to click play and change this to make sure it's off to right again, because when we moved it, then it changed over to touch. And now here we go. I couldn't give you what you wanted. Bring it down like that. Bring what you up. were asking for. Bring it down. It's recording these as keyframes. And now I'm going to stop. I gave you all I could and then And it's going to go to touch because now if I make any changes, it'll start from where I left off. But let's see what we did. Let's take a look. I'm going to click this little drop down arrow, this disclosure triangle, and take a look at the envelope. Oh my gosh, look at all those keyframes. Let's zoom in on this so you can see them all. Those are all the keyframes that were just added by just the changes that we made. Now, if we had done this manually, we would put a keyframe there, a keyframe there, keyframe here, keyframe there. You know, it would have been like five or six keyframes. Here, it's dozens of keyframes. And notice there's a keyframe here at the beginning, even though nothing changed until there. That's what right does. It's a keyframe here at the end, even though there's no change from there to there. That's right. Let's do some more here and add some keyframes with touch. I'm going to put this thing in a different place like that and then start playing and watch it'll bounce back to the previous setting. Here we go. Some more. Make some changes now. now I'm going to let go and it's going to go back to the previous state. But it just couldn't be that way. You gave me all I'm your love and then some. Expecting all let, of my love in return. Let go. Do it again. Let go. And it reverts to its previous condition. That is how touch works. Let me just drag this over so you can see all the keyframes that touch added. Notice that it always goes back to its previous condition if I let go of the mouse. That's the advantage of touch. Let's try latch. Latch will not add a keyframe until we make a change. So notice that we're starting here. Let's say we'll start at 45. We'll start at 45, and we'll go back here. Notice there won't be a keyframe here. If we had right, it would put a keyframe here. But with latch, it won't put a keyframe there until we make a change. Here we go. Where I know how much you wanted me to stay. But it just couldn't be that way. I'm going to click stop. Now we'll go back and take a look. Let's take a look here. And we were at 45. Remember we started at 45? No keyframe was added. So that is latch. So right, latch, and touch. Now we've got all these keyframes here. That seems just a bit like overkill. Do we really need all those keyframes, folks? Probably not. And so there's a way to deal with this in preferences. Let's go to preferences now. Edit or Adobe Audition, preferences. Under multi-track, there's this little automation section here. It says auto match time. That's how long it takes to go back when you've used touch to go back to the initial setting. So you might want to make that longer or shorter depending how abruptly or how smoothly you want to go back. But down here is this little minimum time interval thinning. In other words, every 30 milliseconds, you're going to add a new keyframe if you're making changes. And that's kind of a bit much. That's the default setting. But if I change the 200 milliseconds, that's, I think, a little less in the overkill of keyframe department. Let me go a little bit farther forward. We'll make some changes here, and you'll see the difference now as I go forward. I'm going to use latch again, and we'll just start making some changes there. Someone who held me tight. I never wanted to fall deep in love. It just didn't feel quite right. You okay, I notice a whole lot fewer keyframes now when we use 200 milliseconds, which is you know two tenths of a second rather than 30 milliseconds, which is a lot shorter period of time. So that's another way to kind of limit the number of keyframes. You really don't need that many. Let's see how smooth this is. Pretty smooth. You might want to use fewer keyframes by changing that little option inside preferences. All right, now that we've got all these keyframes, what are we going to do with them? Do we want to keep all of them, or are we going to go back and say, you know, this just didn't work. I don't think this guy worked as well as I want particularly right here, for example. I can get rid of some keyframes. Like if I click on a keyframe like that, it turns yellow. Let's get this one down here and shift click on this one down here. And that selects all the keyframes in between, the contiguously selected keyframes. If I press delete or backspace, they go away. And let's just say that these guys over here, I want to get rid of these from here. Let's say from there to about there. So I shift click on them, get rid of them. There we go, to bring it back to where it was before. 
So you can edit the keyframes that way. You can remove individual keyframes if you want to. But at any rate, that's the process of removing some keyframes. If you think that, you know, this is just a total mess, you can delete all of them by clicking on this eraser. Or if you're just totally in love with how you've done things here and you make sure you don't want it to go south on you for some reason, you can lock them. They will not be changed no matter what you do. If I say, let's make some changes now. Um, it just didn't feel quite right. You got Stop, no keyframes are added because this thing is locked down. Let me just unlock it. I'm gonna get rid of all these guys by clicking the eraser tool here and now they're all gone. Reverts to the last keyframe. So let me get this thing back up to where I started, which was about plus three. All right, and I'm gonna take this thing back to read. What read does is that it reads whatever changes you've made. So if I have a bunch of keyframes here like this, like this, like this, this is the default method. You notice everything said read before. Read is the default thing. It'll it'll play back whatever changes you made. I couldn't give you what you wanted. I couldn't give what you were. That's read. But if I go to off, which is not the default view, then any changes you make will be visible, but Audition will ignore them. It'll ignore them during playback and it'll ignore them when you mix this thing down. But at least you get to see them. Wanted. I couldn't give what you were. So no changes will be heard, but they'll be visible there. So that's why it's good to have the default set to read. It'd be pretty infrequent that you'd use off. Okay, let's just reset this guy by clicking the eraser and go down to that one that we do want to fix. Turn off the solo. I want to fix the instruments at the bottom and we'll do that over here inside the mixer so you can see how that works. So go to the all instruments view. I'm going to switch this thing over to latch. I could use right, I could use touch. I want to go to the beginning. So I'll just bring this guy over because I can work with it over here. I can see where I'm going. That's one thing I like about having the multi-track session there. And we're going to have the volume set where we want it at the default setting here. But when she starts singing, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So here we go. I couldn't give you what you wanted. Okay, now we've set those keyframes. So I can stop. I don't need to keep on playing. I've set those keyframes. We'll take a look here inside the All Instruments bus. Keep on going till we see that. Disclosure triangle, click it to reveal the envelope. And there are the keyframes we just added, and it worked. It does what we wanted it to do. It brought the volume down just as she started to say. I couldn't give you what you wanted. There you go. And I can go farther now into the session. Go to the place where the soloist comes in, the guitar solo comes in, right about there. I can just start playing there and adjust the volume levels again. I want to bring the instruments up there. So here we go. You wanted me to stay, but it just couldn't be that way. I'm gonna stop again. I've added my keyframes. And once more, I can, I can go forward if I want to and then drop that volume when we get when she, when she comes back in. I can do this throughout. I can apply them in groups like this. I don't have to do it across the entire piece. I can do it a little bit at a time. So that's how right, latch, and touch work. I think the advantages are that you get to make smoother volume changes and you can do it in real time. It's a more comfortable, it's a more realistic feel as you make those changes to the sliders or using the controls in the multi-track session.